Acne vulgaris is a long-term skin disease where hair follicles are clogged with dead skin cells and oil from the skin. This diagram here to the right shows you what acne vulgaris looks like. It's very common in adolescents and the reason why I'll mention shortly. The age of onset is usually around puberty or from 25 years and older and it's more severe in males and more common in Caucasians and there is generally a genetic predilection to acne vulgaris. So if your mother or father had acne vulgaris when they were younger, it's more likely that you will get it as well. So let's look at how acne vulgaris occurs. So it's a combination of the plugging of the follicles, androgen hormones and the bacteria, most importantly Propionibacterium acnes. So if you look at this diagram here on the left, this is what a normal skin pore looks like. And these are white heads and black heads. And these are also known as comedones. And it's where we have some kind of a keratin, an oily blockage of these hair follicles. So this is a closed comedone. So the keratin plug is in a much smaller opening. And here we have a open comedone and the keratin plug is in a much larger opening. And this type of follicular plugging prevents drainage of sebum uh, from the pores. So sebum production is quite natural, but with the combination of the keratinization of dead skin cells, clogging up these openings, the sebum isn't allowed to drain and it mixes in with these dry skin cells. And this is where we have the formation of comedones. So here we have a white head or a closed comedone, and here we have a black head or an open comedone. So it's not just blackheads and whiteheads which cause acne because it's quite prevalent to have blackheads and whiteheads, but it's the combination of the blackheads and whiteheads and androgen hormones and bacteria. So the action of the androgen hormones like testosterone, for example, stimulate the sebaceous glands to produce more sebum. So there's more blockage. So this is why it's quite common during puberty where there's an increase in the number of androgen hormones in males and females, especially in males, that they're more likely to develop acne. And the action of propionibacterium, which is present on the skin, it has a lipase enzyme which converts the lipids or the fats or the oil basically into fatty acid. And this causes local release of pro-inflammatory mediators like interleukin-1 or tumor necrosis factor. And this creates an inflammatory response. And that's why you can see all this erythema here. And it can get quite severe in some cases and lead to the development of cysts and pustules. And it can be a lot more severe than what you can see in this picture. So the clinical presentation of how it looks, you have these lesions which last weeks to months and it's more common in the fall than in the winter. Sometimes it can be quite painful and the most common lesions are papules, pustules, nodules and erythema and redness. So the treatment of acne vulgaris, if you have a mild case, it's just topical antibiotics and benzoyl peroxide gels. In more moderate cases, it's the same as above, so topical antibiotics and the benzoyl peroxide gels plus some kind of oral systemic antibiotic. And minocycline is used and also doxycycline. The dosages vary, but it's usually between 50 to 100 milligrams twice a day. And it's also tapered down as the acne gets better. In more severe cases, we use uh, the topical treatment and systemic treatment with isotretinoin, which inhibits sebaceous gland function, so it prevents sebum being secreted and prevents uh, keratinization as well.